isn't this just a cool pack? This is a 1950s or 1960s era Swiss uh, army pack. I bought it at, a, at an army surplus store, oh, I don't know how long ago, 15, 20 years ago. I uh, used it off and on back then, and then uh, it got put in a, a tote and kind of forgot about it for a while. I've got it back out and I'm fixing it up, um, putting a uh, rejuvenator for the leather on it and I'm um, going to start using it as, a, as my uh, bush crafting. Yeah, <laughs> as, my, as, a, as a pack to take out for, for certain things. Um, like when I just want to go on a day hike and do some bush crafting stuff for that. So it's pretty dang cool. This um, stuff I'm putting on the leather, the leather had dried out quite a bit, sitting in a tote for, for all those years. And so I'm rejuvenating the leather. I'm using this um, Obanoff's uh, leather uh, LP. It's leather protectant. It. I used to use Snow Seal years ago. Uh, all the years, um, you know, I uh, cross country skied and used a lot of leather um, gear, like my old cross country ski boots, and that I would use Snow Seal, and um, I was in. I think it was Sportsman's Warehouse or something some years ago to buy some snow seal and they pointed me to this stuff and um, it's a little bit more expensive than snow seal but it has no petroleum products in it so it's actually really good I'm not worrying about getting it on my hands um, whereas with snow seal you would because of the petroleum products and this is just all natural it's beeswax um, an oil from a tree I can't remember what um, and I think there's one other thing, but I don't have my reading glasses on. I can't read that. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I'm, uh, I've been cleaning this pack up, uh, re putting, uh, leather protectant, which rejuvenates the leather. It puts oils back into the leather that will dry out, prevent it from cracking. I had a few places where it was starting to crack, um, right down here. Uh, it started to crack a little bit where it had been drying out. This is like my third coat of this stuff on here. It was so dry. So what I'll do once I, I get it on, I just do one surface at a time. Um, then I take a hair dryer and heat it up. It heats it up and melts it into the, into the leather. So um, let me show you that. I'm going to wash, dry my hands off. Stuff is really oily, but I'll tell you what, uh, it works great in the winter time if you've got really dry, cracked hands. Um, there's been times where my hands just get really dry and start to crack. I will just put this stuff on and rub it in and let it sit and then wipe off the excess, and it works better than any lotion I've ever found. So, so you just take a hairdryer and, and you heat it up. So. When it gets hot enough, uh, as it heats up, you'll start to see that that shine, the the, the uh, glossy shine from the from the wax just start to go away as it melts in. The trick is to get it to where it won't take anymore, to where when you put a light, I, I start out with really heavy coats and then go lighter and lighter, but um, to when you st when you start to heat it up with the blow dryer, it just, the sheen doesn't go away. That's when you know you've saturated the leather with the um, sealer and that it's pretty much good to go. And that, I mean, that's the third coat and it still sucked it in. This is really dry. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some more on. They're pretty cool packs. I mean, you could spend, you could spend a lot of money on a pack like this, um, on a modern one that's, you know, it's new. Um, and if you shop around, I've seen them on eBay for 150 bucks and I've seen them for, for 80, $90. I'm betting if you really look around, you can find one for cheaper. Um, probably not, probably nothing less than 50 nowadays, but so I really ought to undo this strap and get 
behind there. All right, so I've got that done. So once you get it, uh, uh, once you get enough on there, uh, some of it will stop absorbing in as you heat it up. That's when you know you're getting it to the point of of uh, where it's just to, just good to go. So I've got, I went over this whole thing more than once. I'm gonna hit some of these straps even more again because they're it's still taking still taking the Obernoffs. So but this is this pack. This is a great pack. I really like it um, for uh, you know a rough roughing it bushwhacking. Uh, bush crafting kind of pack. It's got the uh, leather on the underside for the bottom. It's uh, got leather straps. It's got this nice pocket right here. That's a that's a decent sized pocket. Probably uh, oh god, that's easily half a gallon right there. Um, probably more than that. It's a good sized pocket. I think I can fit my. Um, my small camera cube from Peak Design in that. I haven't tried. Um, but, uh, and then it's got a really deep, one huge pocket on the inside. It's got a, a, a lightweight canvas uh, clothes bag. You close it up and then, you know, draw a string to pull it all tight. Strap this down to close it all off. I uh, also went around and waterproofed the whole thing on the outside with this uh, Obernoffs. It's not got any petroleum products in it so it uh, will not break down the fabric uh, this is all cotton um, you know canvas um, I did uh, all the outside and some of the inside like on that you can see that's what the original color was and then that's darker I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up um, the leather protectant will darken any leather anything you put it on it's just the way it is. I love dark leather. Um, this, I'm gonna probably put a, a couple more coats on so that it's got really lots of extra protection so that when this gets set down on the ground, it's not sucking up moisture into it. Um, but that's this pack. So let me show you what else I did. So I was never uh, never really happy with these straps. They're, you know, if you put a lot, a lot of weight in this and just carrying over time, they can get uncomfortable. So I came up with this. This is real sheepskin. It's uh, a seatbelt cover that I picked up at a place called Alpha Sheepskin, um, right here in uh, in right on the border of of Midvale and Murray, Utah, right on State Street, right right by the 215 um, on ramp where you can on State Street on ramp. So it's a seatbelt protector, just made to open up and slide over seatbelt. I liked that it had the Velcro, even though it's even though it's not old school. The Velcro, I said Velcro, uh, I think I said it right, whatever. <laughs> so I uh, put some of this, the, the Obernoffs on this to, to help protect it. I'm going to put an old, uh, some pieces of old blanket, um, blanket scraps I've got in here, some wool blanket scraps. So I sewed this strap, I, I made this strap, um, same buckles, same style of buckles, almost identical to what's on this pack. and. Uh, Put a, a patch there to stitch through because the sheepskin is pretty lightweight and it'll tear. Put this on there. I'll put padding in it and then close it up. The reason I wanted it open up to open up like that is so when it gets wet, because it will, I could open it up and uh, spread it out and dry it all out. So this is going to go behind just like that. This this one I designed for this strap to pop through between those two straps and then just cinch it down. I actually made uh, put holes in the so I could cinch it even tighter if I need to. I think that's fine. It won't pull down because of where it's sitting under that. And then this is my add-on sternum strap, which will attach to the other one. So it goes. Just strap it on here. I put two different levels of holes so I can cinch it down tight. That'll stop. It'll hold that in place, stop it from falling off and drifting. And then that's my sternum strap. Here's the other one, pretty much identical. It goes up here. This one I designed a little bit weird. 
but just run it through there and then cinch it down. Put this on. Let's see, it goes like that. So now they're both on there. And then when I put it on, this just easily rolls up through the roll, the roll um, on there and just pull it as tight as I want and cinch it in. Um, tuck the excess under there and I've got the sternum strap and that sits in the perfect spot for me. It's right where I like my sternum straps to be. So that was something I, I finished up last night. So then to take it off, the only drawback to it is it, it you know it's a little tight but you just pull up on it and get your thumbnail under there and slide it out. And when you pull it on, it wants to not, it'll notch right into those as you slide it in. That's what I really like about these roller um, style things. So that's the padding I've, I've put on it to, so it'll be more comfortable to carry. I'm really excited how that turned out. So um, I, I rejuvenated, pulled this thing out, had an old tote and resurrected it because um, it got me thinking about it. I haven't had it out for years when I bought this. So um, this is a saw. I saw somebody else using one of these and I thought that is not only ingenious, but that is really, really cool. I've got a saw that I carry sometimes. It's just a little short T saw about that long. Um, it's great for small tasks, but I wanted something especially for winter camping that I could uh, really go to town and cut some firewood. So this saw is the Boreal 24 made by Agawa out of Canada. And this is an awesome saw. When I got this thing, I opened up the box and I was like, wow, just looking at that sheath, I was like, wow, okay, that is high quality stuff. When they, I mean, it's machine stitched obviously, but that's a really high quality sheath, built really well, just spectacular. It weighs almost as much as the saw. <laughs> so when I take this thing out in the field, I probably won't take the sheath because um, that almost doubles the weight. But this saw, this is a saw that folds out. It's a, a basic bow saw. Fold that handle around, grab hold of that, fold it around. There's a slot that the blade goes into. You um, bring this notch right there, hook it in the end of the handle, and then it takes a little bit of strength, clamp it in, don't get your finger caught in there. But uh, that's totally perfect 24 inch bow saw that's packable. When I saw somebody else using this thing, I was like, I gotta have that because if I'm gonna be the winter camping I plan on doing this winter, I haven't winter camped in quite a while. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, probably where it's one spot I'm going to be going for sure. There's, I'm not going to have access to water, so I'm going to have to be boiling snow. And um, I've got a stove, that little wood burning uh, stove that uh, I actually made from something else. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do a video about that. Um, uh, that uh, I'll be using to boil water down, to melt snow down for water. Um, at least, you know, so. That um, is the best way to do it if you've got access to wood when you're camping in the woods. Um, unless you want to use like, you know, an MSR stove, which I've got, but the white gas stoves, um, you can go through a lot of fuel if you're camping for multiple days. But so this saw is pretty cool to, to undo it. You just put your thumb in there and pull that out. It just folds back around. The um, teeth go down, just naturally go down. The, that handle just goes right in, fits on top. And then this just folds right back in on top of itself and it's put back together really smooth. The first thing I thought when I pulled this out of its sheath and looked at it was that'd make a good weapon. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, I, I like weapons. I don't know if you can see these back here. This is a replica of a, an authentic replica. It's battle quality of a Crusader's Axe. Circa, you know, 11 to 14, well, 11 to 12, 1300. Um, high carbon steel head on it, really good quality. Um, this is a, don't you fall. This, 
These actually just sit there. I didn't stage those there. These, this is their permanent home. Um, so this is basket hilt claymore, Scottish basket hilt claymore. Um, oh, I've got a, I've got a hook on there. Um, that uh, double-edged broadsword, um, made by Muse. Both all of these are made, uh, I believe, by Windless Steel Museum. I bought them buy them from museum replicas um this is really cool this 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 belt thing is called a baldric um totally authentic to the time period with got the uh scottish thistles on it a friend of mine played with the salt lake scots he played bagpipes with the salt lake scots and had this hanging in his closet we were talking i was over there one day we were talking and he's like you know i don't know what this is do you want this because he knew i was into into stuff leather stuff and i'm like you know what that is he's like no i said that is a baldric and he's like a oh, what and i said it's a baldric to hold sword to hold the sword this was part of their uniform at one point it it has the frog um, that had the the buttonhole for the for the sheath to to fit in and it's made in scotland <laughs> it's just perfect for the time period of this which was you know um 1700s um all the way through, um, you know, even 1776 and that. So, really, I've always been into that medieval weapon and just that kind of stuff. And then this sword, this is a just a, a standard medieval. My light just turned off. The battery died. So, um, this is a standard medieval broadsword, uh, circa, you know, 12, 1300. Um, really good quality stuff, um, you know. So... They're, I, they're authentic in every way, shape, and form, the weight, except for one item, and that is the steel is generally better than what would have been, been made back then, um, unless, you know, you were really wealthy and could afford a really high-end sword back then, um, um, a folded steel sword. These are every bit as good as what was being used, so that's a little squirrel moment you're, if you were wondering what that was behind me. So, another thing I did... I, uh, I've, I'm a tomahawk man. I've got a number of wood-handled 1800s-style tomahawks, and I got looking for something different. And uh, I found this. Got it from Blade HQ, a company right here in Utah, American Fork, Utah. And uh, when I saw it, I thought, you know, that's a little different looking. That's, that's unique. And, uh, and I liked the short handle. I love short handles. My handles on my hawks always need to be about that long from... If I hold it up there, the head needs to come to my wrist. And this the, the measurement on it was right on the money. So this actually is a Duck Dynasty tomahawk. Um, it was uh, Kershaw. It's made by Kershaw. It's a good good tomahawk, a good hatchet. May, uh, made under the Duck Dynasty brand. The head is in the shape of a duck kind of thing. <laughs> I liked the eye because I envisioned doing that. It didn't come with the, with the uh, blade cover. So I sat down one evening and about an hour while we were watching TV, whipped that together. It's got a thick piece of leather right there to prevent the blade from cutting through. Stitched it around, um, attached, put on the attachment. This piece was actually just a scrap I had that was just like that. I did not modify that piece at all. It even had those notches in it, which I thought was uh, just cool. I dig through my leather stuff and find pieces that will work. Put that on so it just, just fits on there. That goes through the eye, which is nice and tight, even right there. That's not going to come off. But then an extra attachment point to and to get stop the, the strap from flapping around. Put it through there and pull it down tight, and it and it worked out perfect to just go past the uh, the notches. So it's got a couple different attachment points to prevent it from coming off. The 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 tongue the thong here, that strap I just cut a piece of that I had off of another big piece and, and put it on there. I don't always use those, but they're handy to have sometimes. And it's it's just handy to have that in case I need to strap something down. Like I could pull this off pretty easy and strap this to the pack, you know, just like that. Just run this around that through that strap point. There's various strap points on this pack and just hang it right there, which is probably what I'll do when I take this thing out. So um, I haven't even used this yet. I ought to go chop some wood in the backyard with it. But so that's that. So there's uh, there's the pack. My uh, little stuff I'm 
getting uh, you know kind of back into my bushcrafting days. I'll do some more videos on some of my stuff. Oh, stuff that I've done over the years like this. This was something I made a long time ago, maybe 20 years ago. That's made from raccoon fur. I bought that at a secondhand store. It was a woman's stole. Um, I recycle fur if I can. Get It's the best way to do it is to just go out and find furs that, that nobody, you know, old clothes and stuff. And that was a, like a stole that went around a woman's neck made out of raccoon. I turned it into a, a Russian Ivan hat. <laughs> doesn't cover the ears but it's nice on a, on you know i uh, lined it with a, a wool an old wool blanket i you know just pulled the blanket apart and lined it i mean it doesn't fit that way that looks kind of cool if you wanted to cap you know turn it inside out with the fur inside doesn't quite fit me but and uh this this was uh a road killed actually two different road killed foxes i had some friends that lived um on a road here in the in Utah that had uh, quite a few fox that would get killed across it and um, So I told him hey keep the lookout if you if you see how a roadkill fox Let me know and I ended up getting two of them one of them the tail had been cut off already somebody had stopped and grabbed the tail So but this one so this is pieces of two um, Which is what it took to actually make it um, and uh, just a mountain man style you know fox hat I lined it with wool, a thinner wool blanket than that one. Um, this thing's hot to wear. I mean, it really, the front legs keep my, well, they're just, yeah, they're front legs that I sewed on to keep over ear flaps. Um, hangs down my back quite a ways. Um, you'll probably see this in some videos. I've got an idea for a video where I'm going to go out and uh, cross-country ski on my old 70s era wooden skis. Um, up in the Uinta Mountains, down this road I know of that's just long and flat. I'll be carrying this pack and, uh, and this and some other stuff. I'm gonna, actually, I'll be pulling a sleigh too, a polk sleigh that I'm building. Um, I'll have a video of that here soon. Um, a polk sleigh, if you're wondering what that is, it's a sleigh that you pull behind you in the snow. You put your gear in it and you pull it uh, typically with poles. People will pull them with ropes, but poles are better because you can control it better especially on hills, it won't get away from you, come down and hit you. So I'm going to be doing a video uh, with going back in and camping for at least one night into, into a spot. And uh, so watch for that. That's going to be probably in uh, February or March. But so there's my pack. There's my little bushcrafting kind of thing for you and uh, what I'm doing. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you, if you like it, click the like button. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you can pick these up on eBay. Um, I've seen them for anywhere from 80 to 150 bucks. This, this exact pack. Um, I got mine for like $35 in an army surplus store years and years ago. So, um, thanks for watching. Um, click the like, leave me a comment, um, subscribe, please. <laughs> and, uh, um, I like to say, uh, you know, because I love being outdoors and love seeing the, I mean, love getting on the trail. Um, love just getting out there and uh, walking on a trail. So uh, I'd like to use old Roy Rogers uh, phrase, happy trails. Mm -hmm.